Now for our story. This evening after supper at the Lane Farm, Aunt Mary's son, Randy, had driven his pretty cousin, Peggy Douglas, in to see a picture. The two young people have just driven off after promising to bring home a quart of ice cream, and Aunt Mary and Lefty settle down on the front porch. Mary Lane is sitting in her favorite old rocking chair, and Lefty leans back luxuriously in the porch swing. There is a cool little breeze blowing up from the river. A slender moon shines through the apple tree in front of the house, and the evening is still, with nothing to break the quiet but the plaintive creak of Lefty's swing as he pushes it back and forth lazily with his foot. It seems to me as if that swing could stand a little oil. Oh, I guess it could. But on the other hand, I kind of like that old squeak. The longest was sitting out here, taking things easy. <laughs> well, Lefty, if you're so attached to it, I wouldn't have you change it for the world. Thank you, Aunt Mary. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, most guys get started to thinking about the past because of something romantic. The smell of apple blossoms or these fancy perfumes women wear. But with me, it's little sounds, and not the kind you expect, either. For instance? Oh, gosh, there's a lot of them. Like the rumble of a truck going over a wooden bridge. <laughs> that silly squawk that chickens make when you go to feed them. And, of course, you know my favorite. It's about time. Yep, and it's due right now. Listen. Yeah, ah, there it goes. Right on schedule. 7.15, and all's right with the world. Well, I don't know as I'd go as far as to say that, Aunt Mary. I can think of a few improvements. Well, of course, Lefty, there's always room. But just the same, it seems to me things have worked out quite well for all of us lately. Randy's happy. Yep. The farm's doing well. You and Dell. Well, Lefty, I think you know how glad I am. But all that old bitterness between you two is gone. Sure. I'm glad too, Aunt Mary. Except I wish I could forget what a cluck I was, misjudging Dell the way I did, being so obstinate. I'd like just to erase the whole business from my mind. That will come with time, Lucky. I realize now how right you and Dell both were about Peggy and Nicholas not being a good team. It's too bad, but that's the way things go sometimes. Well, people's emotions are concerned, Lefty. It's a little, uh, a little difficult to predict. Yeah, you can't always call the play. Mm -mm. But there's one thing, Aunt Mary. One item I'm not willing to back down on. Not entirely. What's that, Lefty? About Bill Mead. You still can't find it in your heart to like that boy, can you? Well, it's not exactly a question of liking or disliking him. The trouble is, I can't seem to agree with everyone about his having been shoved around by circumstances. But, Lefty, you know what happened? About kids deceiving him and all that? Oh, sure. I'm not forgetting that part of it. But, Aunt Mary, the way I see it, Bill needn't have gotten into this situation. Not if he had the sense he was born with. Now, look at it this way. Either a man's responsible for his actions or he isn't. Mm -hmm. Certainly he is. But we can't look at just one side of a thing, Lefty. Yeah, sure. But if a guy makes mistakes, does foolish things, he has to expect to get himself into hot water. And if he does, he ought to be willing to admit his errors. And I'm sure Bill admits his errors. Well, if he does, he must know what a lot of what happened is on his own head. Yes. But Lefty, everyone makes mistakes at one time or another. You can't hold it against him forever. Especially someone who, who has the basic integrity and character. Oh, sure. Sure, but what worries me is this, Aunt Mary. He might make just as foolish a mistake again some other time. It's possible. We're all human. Yeah, but and... that guy's too darn human to suit me. That is, if you mean by being human that he has the right to human failings and weaknesses. But don't you believe in being tolerant? Giving people a chance to uh, prove themselves? Oh, sure I do. But in this case, I'm just a little leery. Peggy's mixed up in it. And even though things came out fairly well this time, we might not be so lucky next time. You know, Lefty, 
Young people have a way of growing up, becoming more mature. And while experience is a hard school, once you learn, you seldom forget. And while I'm certain Bill has matured, has learned a great deal, Lefty. Look at the way he's taken hold of that job of his. Ah, oh, he's doing all right there, I guess. Yes, indeed he is. You'd be surprised to hear people talking about him in Wakefield. They all have a, a lot of respect for Bill. Well, I never said he didn't have good business sense. Well, it's more than just business sense. Most people are a little slow in accepting strangers. You should know that. Why, when you came here... Yeah, I yeah, know. They didn't exactly gather me to themselves with great cries of joy. No, they didn't. But in a little while, they treated you as if you'd lived here all your life. And it was the same way with Bill. But now they have accepted him, in spite of all that's happened. Yes, Lefty, Wakefield has a lot of respect for that boy. But Aunt Mary had no idea of a campaign begun by Ben Calvert, a scheme he had concocted in order to discredit Bill Mead, his former son-in-law, in the eyes of the townspeople. For Ben had started a totally false rumor to the effect that Bill Mead was carrying on a flirtation with the wife of Mario Descari, the handsome, quick-tempered young Italian who was known to be violently jealous of his young wife. This rumor has spread rapidly throughout the town, has even reached Mario himself. Mario, who at this moment says to Carla, Oh, I want to trust you, Carla. Sure, I want to, baby, but, but people keep talking, saying things. Everywhere I go lately, they look at me, smile, and whisper together. If there's no truth in it, why do they act that way? But there isn't, Mario. Believe me. Please. Then why does it happen? People don't make up such stories. Well, sometimes they do. Some people are mean, Mario. They, they like to hurt, and, and they're jealous when they know other people are happy. They want to spoil it. But these people hardly know us. They wouldn't bother to start such lies just for nothing. Don't you see? That's why I got so mad thinking about it. It doesn't start out from, from just nowhere. It might. When people have nothing else to do, they talk, make up things. Well, you said yourself this is Georgie, whatever his name is. Georgie Stewart. You told me yourself you don't like him, that he's a storyteller. Well, that's his job. He works on the paper. Gathers up the gossip to write for the dopes who read it. A bunch of silly stuff. What he wrote about you was good, Mario. About what you did in the army. It's because I told him I'd skin him alive if he wrote any gushy stuff. I scared him so he's afraid not to put down just the truth. Well, well Mario, that, that's probably it. You made him mad at you, so he started a story just to hurt you. Maybe. But still, what about these other fellows? They were talking, too, those guys at Smitty's. All I know, Mario, is that it isn't true. Mr. Calvert, he acted as if he knew something. If you go on like this, everything will be spoiled. Mario, what can I do to make you believe me? First, not to see Bill Mead. Let him stay away from here. Oh, Mario, if you say that, it means you don't trust me after all this talking. And what will Mr. Mead think? He won't understand. Who cares whether he understands? You say he means nothing to you. Now you worry about hurting his feelings. No, it isn't that. But if we let the false stories and change our ways, then the falsehoods and lies are winning out after all. Look, Mario, wouldn't it be better to invite Mr. Mead and his girl Peggy to dinner? When you see them together, see how much they love each other. If he loved her so much, how come he married someone else? We don't know, Mario. There were probably reasons. But at least they're going to be married now. Tomorrow I'll go to Aunt Mary's, ask them to come over. We'll have a nice party the way we used to. We'll laugh and sing and all this other will be forgotten. It's not so easy. But we must wash it all away, Mario. If we don't, I'm afraid something bad will happen to us. Carla Descari's voice was grave, frightened. The young Italian girl instinctively felt the menace which threatened Mario and herself. A danger which could destroy their happiness. She was worried and puzzled, at a loss to explain these stories... She would have been astonished to learn that it was Ben Calvert who had deliberately planted the seeds which were already taking root, which might eventually grow to cast their black shadows over the Discary home. <laughs> 